This is the Barbados Today Morning News for Monday, October 16. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. We begin with news that International Business Minister Donville Innes says there will be no significant loss from the shutting down of four offshore companies. Innes recently announced that the company's licenses will be revoked due to wrongdoing. And he made the latest comments following a service at the St. Matthias Church yesterday to mark the 20th anniversary of the Barbados International Business Association. I expect this week that the correspondence will be sent to the various parties um, the, 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 and, and that they'll be placed in the official gazette as required. Uh, for notice, but I am not going to issue a press release from my ministry providing names and details on companies. I shall not do that. At the end of the day, these things also give us a bad rep when we start to put into the public domain through press releases and name calling uh, information. So, so the names of the entities will be released in, 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 in due time. I am not going to get into any public discussion as to exactly what they did. Let me make that abundantly clear. There is no significant loss in revenue to Barbados. But more importantly, why would re revenue loss be of any in in interest? What about the revenue that we will not get if we didn't do the things we have to do to protect the reputation of Barbados? So I'm not going to get involved in any dollars and cents. There's been another call for the increased production of healthy food in Barbados in a bid to reduce the island's high food import bill. It came from the country representative of the Food and Agriculture Organization, Dr. Lystra Fletcher-Paul, in her address to the annual general meeting of the Barbados Agricultural Society on the weekend. The current bill stands at almost half a million U.S. dollars. And Dr. Fletcher Paul says the production of healthy foods will also reduce the cases of chronic non-communicable diseases. Now in the context of Barbados, food sovereignty is important in determining how the country will address its heavy dependence on imported foods. 87% of the food that is consumed in Barbados is imported and that contributes to a very high food import bill, which is now stands at almost half a billion dollars a year, US. And more importantly, the troubling problem of the high incidence of overweight and obesity, which currently stands at almost 20% in men and 33% 33, 33 in women. And this overnutrition is linked to the consumption of imported foods which are high in processed carbohydrates, fats, sugars, and starch, and salt, sorry, and is contributing to the high incidence of the chronic non-communicable diseases, which is now the leading cause of death in the region and in Barbados. She added that the recent damage caused by Hurricanes Irma and Maria last month also highlights the need for farmers to adopt climate-smart agricultural practices. Researchers need to promote agricultural innovation systems, which encourage the use of new technologies, as well as social, economic, institutional, organizational, and policy processes, which explore the linkages, interactions, relationships, networks, capacities, learning, and sharing. In this way, these elements contribute to determining how the system operates, as well as its outcomes, and impacts. The private sector needs to invest in agriculture and to encourage rural development and provide employment for rural populations. Agro-tourism linkages need to be promoted and strengthened and retailers need to support local farmers and agro-processors. Consumers need to be educated on health and nutrition so that they make healthy food choices and demand high-quality local food when they go to the market. In other news this morning, Barbados Today understands that a resolution has been reached in the dispute that led to a number of firefighters reporting sick since last weekend. And at the heart of the matter has been the return of scores of officers who went to Dominica to assist in the recovery efforts following the passage of Hurricane Maria. 
Attorney General Adriel Brathwaite was due to hold talks on the weekend with the Chief Fire Officer Errol Maynard and the Barbados Fire Service Association. And there were also a number of other outstanding matters that are still to be addressed and we understand that follow-up talks have been planned in a bid to reach a resolution. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, touching one community at a time. Thank you for staying with us. We're back now with news from the region. The state-owned Guyana Sugar Corporation says it plans to be profitable within the next three years, and it is now taking steps to reduce its dependency on government subventions. The Deputy Chief Executive Officer, Paul Bim, says Gaisuko will rely on value-added sugar production to achieve its cash neutrality ta targets. Government has provided $32 billion in financial support to Gaisuko over the past three years. Residents of one community in St. Lucia got the first taste of water from the Eastern Caribbean's first solar-powered mobile desalination facility. The project's financiers are hoping that it will solve the water issues of the Labrie community and also eventually help small island states who are recovering from natural disasters. We get more in this report from HDS News Force. Those at the helm of the Eastern Caribbean's first solar-powered mobile desalination facility got the thumbs up from their public. I'm saying that if you were given that water and you were not aware that it was from the plant, you would... You think it's normal water. It's the same water you drink from your pipe. It's the water that you buy. It's be in fact, it is better than a lot of the bottled water that we're buying. It yeah. is just like the forest water, and it is very fantastic. The initiative is groundbreaking in many aspects. It's the story of a small fishing village with a prototype boasting the potential to make acute water issues a thing of the past and usher in new hope for water issues post-natural disaster. It came about in 2015 by the Library Fishers and Consumers Cooperative and was a response to a request by the Global Environment Facilities Small Grants Program in St. Lucia to assist in responding to the impact of climate change in Library. And finally, on the international scene, Somalia is marking three days of national mourning after more than 200 people were killed by twin bomb blasts in the heart of the capital Mogadishu on Saturday. At least 100 others were wounded. Authorities say this marks the, the deadliest attacks since an Islamist insurgency began in 2007. The president also called for donations of blood and funds for victims of the attack. We get more in this Reuters report. Utter devastation in Somalia's capital as the death toll from twin bombings on Saturday has now soared to at least 85, making it one of the worst attacks in the country in recent years. Police say that about another hundred people have also been wounded. The massive explosion from a truck bomb outside a hotel in Mogadishu completely destroyed several buildings on this street, which is also home to government offices and restaurants. Two hours later, a second, smaller car bombing hit elsewhere in the city, in a district home to one of the country's central hospitals and a university. Hundreds of people have descended onto the streets looking for missing loved ones. Police had to clear them from the area, fearing another attack. No one has claimed responsibility for the attack yet, but it's similar to others done by the militant group Al-Shabaab, which has links to Al-Qaeda. An international effort to back the weak government in Mogadishu has driven the jihadists from most of their territory in the country, but they still frequently launch attacks inside the city. Somalia has been torn apart by civil war for almost three decades. The power vacuum provided fertile ground for Al-Shabaab's rise in 2006. And that's news this morning. Remember, there's more on our website, www.barbadastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also find us on Mix 96.9 FM. I am Marie Claire Williams. Have a good morning.